Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back now we will discuss uh, say along a demand curve say I am a consumer okay and in a market there is a demand curve right so if price moves along that demand curve right say price goes up price goes down like that so as the law of demand tells that if price moves uh, certain direction uh, I will adjust my consumption behavior of that commodity right so how uh, due to this adjustment what is total expenditure how my expenditure will move right we are now interested to know that thing say uh, say suppose uh, we are we are having this kind of one say let us draw a demand curve okay as usual we are measuring quantity in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose this is the demand curve so you know that say suppose when this is the price say O is the origin uh, suppose A B is the demand curve right and when say O P is the price O say O Q was my consumption. When O P prime is the price okay, O say Q prime is my consumption quantity right. So, uh, obviously price is moving upward I am cutting down my consumption right. So, so, when uh, at price O P consumption amount is consumption or quantity O Q and similarly at price O P prime quantity consumption is O Q prime right. Given this two situations so suppose this is E point and this is E prime point. So, at this two time or uh, this two points E and E prime point what is my total expenditure what is the money I, I have to spend to purchase that commodity the commodity amount of commodity what I am I am consuming. So, definitely my expenditure at E point is the represented by the area of that rectangular kind of area O this is E prime point ok. So, O Q prime E prime P prime that is my total expenditure expenditure ok when price is O P prime and exactly the same way say O Q E P that is my total expenditure when price is this this is at this price right. So, now uh, if we are interested to compare whether this expenditure is increasing or decreasing or something like that what is the relationship ok. So, price moving one direction our quantity consumption behavior is adjusting accordingly ok. But due to this adjustment whether we have to spend more amount of money or less amount of money or the same amount of money whatever it is how that relationship or how that is related right. So, we are now interested to know that price movement vis a vis total expenditure that total expenditure sometimes it is called revenue also. So, revenue uh, price or revenue quantity movement ok and uh, we can understand that perhaps this will be related or uh, this will depends on what is the elasticity of demand value own price elasticity of demand value right. Let us see perhaps we, we, we get that kind of impression, but let us see how they are related. So, uh, we will we will use some uh, some uh, smaller or some fundamental uh, calculus which will be helpful for us. So, of course, when we are talking about expenditure, so expenditure definitely uh, total revenue ok or expenditure that is basically. So, I am writing revenue ok revenue that is basically P times quantity price is measured in the vertical axis quantity is measured in the horizontal axis that is why we are getting this area of the rectangular rectangular shape area this 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 is a rectangle this this rectangle and so on if I am here. So, this area is my expenditure area of that rectangular space is my exp total expenditure and so on right. So, 
and of course, look at here since this E E prime perhaps this point is E double prime suppose this is Q double prime this is P double prime and so on right. Uh, so, as I am moving to from E to E prime or E to E prime it is essentially basically we are moving along the same demand curve A B right. So, since we are moving along a given demand curve P and Q they are not independent one depends on other. So, we can write q as a function of p, we can write also p as a function of q as well no, no issues right. So, in that way we can write that ok. Now, if we take the change in our revenue or change in expenditure due to change in say price ok. So, what it will be ok. So, if you take that uh, derivative it will be q as a function of p as it is plus p into del q as a function of p del p ok. So, this q as a function of p I am I am simply writing q not as a function of p that will be easy so, q you can write q as a function of p no issue ok plus this ok del q del p that is the thing ok. Okay. Now, if we take so this derivative if we take the derivative of revenue revenue equals to p into quantity. So, if you take derivative with respect to price this will be the case. Now, if we take q outside it will be 1 plus p by q into del q del p right. So, this thing we can write q whole into 1 minus absolute value of the elasticity of demand. Look at here del q del p into p by q that is the elasticity value ok. And since we have a downward sloping demand curve along different points that E point, E prime point or E double prime point whatever point we consider elasticity value is negative we know. So, if we take its absolute value this plus sign will be minus. So, in that way q whole into 1 minus 1 upon e. So, now it is very easy it is del r del p right. So, if price moves one direction to what extent revenue or which direction revenue will move right that depends on this particular equation. So, if say suppose su suppose this elasticity value equals to 1 we know that along that demand curve a b demand curve what is the midpoint suppose e is the midpoint looks like you know from the diagram it looks like e is the midpoint right. So, at the midpoint of that a b demand curve that elasticity value is 1. Okay, so, when elasticity value is 1 this bracketed term is basically 1 minus 1 equals to 0. So, right hand side is 0. So, essentially you are getting when elasticity value is 1 you are getting that del r del p that equals to 0 that means what if price moves little bit does not matter whether uh, increases or decreases total revenue will not change. So, because del r del p equals to 0. So, there is no there will not there will not be any change in total expenditure or total revenue in this particular case right. So, exactly the same way if say elasticity so we, we can easily uh, we can easily show in that way because equation we got del r del p equals to q whole into 1 minus absolute elasticity value right. So, when elasticity is greater than 1 that time this thing is negative 1 minus that elasticity value. So, this thing is negative q to quantity look at here the diagram ok does not matter whether we are at this point, this point, this point or this point like that unless we are the on the point A any other points quantity is some positive right. So, since quantity is positive definitely uh, so, q into this negative. So, in that case this will be so at elasticity value is greater than 1 implies del r del p is this right because this is negative quantity q into that negative is negative. So, I am telling less than 0 what does it mean this means if p goes up it implies revenue or expenditure will go down they move uh, they will move opposite direction because del r del p is less than 0 right they will move opposite direction. Exactly the same way when e less than 1 that time 
this is a fraction 1 minus that thing fraction, but positive q into that is positive. So, that implies del r del p is greater than 0, it is positive. So, greater than 0, it implies basically if p moves this side, it implies revenue move that side. In this case also, if p moves go down, it implies revenue will go up in this particular case. In this particular case, if p goes down, revenue will also go down in this particular case, right. So, that depends on the elasticity value, we can easily find out okay, uh, how uh, due to movement in price and consumers behavior uh, accordingly in the quantity of ad, uh, quantity adjustment, how much expenditure consumer is spending. Okay. So, we can easily find out in this way, right. Uh, uh, see uh, the chapter, this is the chapter number 5 perhaps we are discussing right in your, in your book, the book we are following, I think this is chapter number 5 in your book, right. At the end of that chapter, you will see there is a table summarizing depending on the elasticity value, if price goes up, what will be the revenue? or total expenditure, if price go down, what will be the total expenditure. So, what I am telling that you need not try to memorize that table, right. Just write down this equation, it is very easy, we have derived this equation, right. And then depending on the elasticity value, you just play around, okay. okay. You can easily get that uh, what will be the relationship or uh, your total expenditure will move which direction depending on the elasticity of demand value due to uh, movement in the price and adjustment in quantity accordingly. Okay. Now, let us try to understand what is the economic logic, this is the uh, mathematically we can easily show and we are showing in fact, what is the economic logic is that. Look, say suppose we are getting say here, when elasticity value is greater than 1, absolute elasticity value is greater than 1, that time if price increases we are telling that revenue will fall this line no this line okay when this is the case right let us try to understand why that is the case from the from the definition of elasticity as such okay so what is the definition of elasticity elasticity of demand here elasticity of demand's definition is that percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change in price right so, percentage change in quantity demanded will be in the numerator and percentage change in the price will be in the denominator, right. So, when elasticity value is greater than 1, absolute value of elasticity is greater than 1, that means what? Percentage change in quantity demanded is let more vis a vis percentage change in price because percentage change in price in the new denominator, right. So, numerator is larger than the denominator, that is why this is greater than 1, right. So, uh, your revenue equals to price into quantity, right. So, when price is increasing means suppose this is the demand curve, price is increasing means you are going that direction, you are suppose at E point and you are moving that direction, right. So, it is basically price is increasing, quantity is falling, but percentage change in quantities that is in the numerator that is larger than the percentage change in price. So, that means, the rate at which price is increasing quantity is falling much more faster rate. Price is increasing look at here price and quantity adjustment in the opposite direction, price is increasing quantity is falling. Since, elasticity of demand value is greater than 1 that means, the rate at which price is increasing quantity is falling much more faster rate at much more faster rate right that is why elasticity value is greater than 1 because change in the percentage change in quantity demanded in the in the numerator right. So, as a result that definitely one is increasing another is falling, but falling percentage is much more faster than the increasing percentage. So, definitely their product will have a ten tendency to fall that we are landing right exactly the same way if say price falls what will happen? When price will fall, that time price is falling. Okay, so one minute. Okay, when say revenue price falls into say quantity increases, but elasticity demand value is greater than one. So the rate at which price is falling, quantity is increasing much more faster rate. Right. So as a result, revenue definitely will increase their product. Right. 
right? Exactly the same way you can think of when elasticity less absolute value of the own price elasticity is less than 1, then why this will be the case? So, economically you can easily clarify in this way, right? So, elasticity this less than 1, less than 1 means what? The rate at which change in the quantity demanded is happening, the change in the price is much more faster rate, right? Because aha, elasticity is basically del q by q and del p by p, right? This is the percentage change in quantity demanded and this is the percentage change in price, right? So, this elasticity value when less than 1 that means, numerator is lower than the denominator, right? So, revenue will what happen? Revenue will price suppose increasing, quantity is falling, but price increment is much more faster than quantity falls, because this elasticity value is less than 1, right? So, as a result what will happen? Definitely increment is much more faster the, uh, than the other com com component. So, definitely revenue will increase. So, when price will increase, revenue will increase if this is the case. Look at here, if this is the case, when price will increase, revenue will also increase exactly the same way. So, it is not that we are getting this mathematically we are showing, uh, see in economics or any subject, okay, we, we, we may bring some mathematical tools or some alternative tools, right. But at the end, uh, all of us should uh, ask ourselves whether there is uh, we are getting any conflict between these mathematical tools or the results what we are uh, obtaining using mathematical tools and our logical understanding of the concept. Right, there should not be any conflict. So, that we are basically discussing here, right. So, you can understand. So, here what we have discussed first, we have discussed what is the relationship between your expenditure vis a vis price changes and accordingly your quantity adjustment, right. And, and we, we have shown that uh, that depends on what is the elasticity of demand value. Right? And depending on the elasticity of demand value, that revenue will go one direction, other direction like that, depending on which direction price is moving and which direction quantity is moving. Right? Okay. So, let us let us complete this discussion and then let us go, this discussion has uh, some extension. So, suppose sometimes back in our previous lecture, we introduce uh, that uh, we are now searching, can there be a demand curve uh, along along different points on that curve, elasticity of demand value is same. Okay. Of course, we are talking. So, let us let us uh, confine ourselves that uh, usual demand curve, downward sloping demand curve. So, we understand we have already shown that if we have a downward sloping usual downward sloping demand curve right, like this, which is a straight line okay along different points on that demand curve elasticity of demand value is changing, right? The changes from one point to the another. So, the first thing definitely if there is at all a demand curve along which or along the different points on that the elasticity value is same, it should not be a straight line for sure, right? Mind that we are talking about the usual demand curve, not the extreme kind of vertical or horizontal demand curve, usual downward sloping demand curve. So, we are searching now for an usual demand curve along which elasticity of demand value remains the same on different points, right. So, first lesson we are getting that if at all such kind of demand curve exist, it should not be a straight line. Okay. So, if it is not a straight line, it may be a uh, usual hyperbolic kind of diagram, right. So, let us talk about say suppose we know the say price this side, quantity that side and we know that revenue or del R del P that relationship we have already derived that is basically that is basically Q whole into 1 minus absolute value of the elasticity. Okay. And we, so, we know that if absolute elasticity value is 1, that time this is 0, right. So, when this is equals to 1, that time del R del P that is equals to 0. That means, even if there is a price adjustment, and uh, price increases or price price movement, price increase or price falls, there is change in price 
and due to that change in price quantity adjustment, you, there will be not be any change in the revenue. Can we think of a demand curve where revenue is not changing or revenue is same along that demand curve? Look revenue equals to here price into quantity. So, we can have a rectangular hyperbola, I hope all of you know that rectangular hyperbola. Okay. So, what is rectangular hyperbola? Rectangular hyperbola is basically price into in this one axis we are measuring quantity another axis we are measuring price. So, price into quantity that must be equals to constant some constant right. If this case so that is the rectangular hyperbola ok. Let me tell you for the people who may not know at about the rectangular hyperbola ok. First from where this name is coming rectangular hyperbola rectangular hyperbola hyperbola. Okay. I, I hope that almost all of you know about this curve, but who may not know okay, for them this is. So, it is about a general hyperbolic curve, hyperbolic curve like this okay, what we have drawn here. Okay. Rectangular that rectangle there is a term called rectangle here is coming right. So, the idea is that along that kind of curve you can take any point. Okay draw two perpendiculars from that point on the two axis. So, one per perpendicular on the horizontal axis, another perpendicular on the vertical axis, you can form a rectangle. You take another point on that on that curve, again draw similarly two perpendicular, one perpendicular in the horizontal axis, on the horizontal axis another perpendicular on the vertical axis from that point. In that way, so whatever point you can take we can draw two perpendiculars on the two axis from each of those points result and you will get different rectangles, different rectangles for this particular case say one rectangle is green color, another rectangle say yellow colored, another rectangle say red colored okay, in this diagram we have drawn. So, when the area of all these alternative rectangles are same, it is called rectangular hyperbola. Okay. So, if our demand curve is a rectangular hyperbola, then what will happen? Look, since it is a rectangular hyperbola and this area of this different curves, no red color uh, different rectangles, red color rectangles, yellow color, green color rectangles, whatever we have drawn here, right all are the by definition of this curve that it is a rectangular hyperbola, the area is same of all these rectangles that means p into q equals to some constant, it is the same value right. As a result it must be elasticity value is 1 right. So, so what we are searching can there be an usual demand curve different points on that will be the same elasticity of demand value definitely rectangular hyperbola is one of that kind of demand curve. Okay. So, you, if you, are, you have a demand curve which is rectangular hyperbola, okay, not only along different points its elasticity value is same at this point, at this point and this point elasticity value is not only they are same everywhere that elasticity value is 1, everywhere it is equals to 1. Now, can we think of okay, fine. So, first can there be a demand curve the question what we have started with uh, using uh, yeah what we have started with we are we get an answer yes, yes there is a demand curve there can be a demand curve along which different lines uh, along that demand curve different points on that elasticity value will be same. Okay at least the rectangular hyperbola is one such demand curve okay. and there it is not same that same value is 1. Now, we can search for the another question right. So, what we are doing we are basically playing around this elasticity of demand different diagrams and all. If we search a little bit more okay, can we have a demand curve okay, along different points different points along that demand curve elasticity value is same, but that value may not be one may be something other than one, may be less than one or may be greater than one, may be half, may be two or something like that. Can there be a demand curve? Okay. So, we can we can ask for that answer is yes, there can be a that kind of demand curve. 
Okay. So, let us just uh, to that suppose our uh, it is that if at all that kind of demand curve is there it will be also that general hyperbolic kind of curve. We are measuring q here we are measuring price quantity in the vertical horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and it will it definitely will be a general hyperbolic demand curve it will not be a straight line for sure. Okay. But the demand curves equation should be p to the power i q to the power j should be constant. If that is the case in that along that demand curve uh, elasticity value will be i by j absolute elasticity value will be i by j. So, why let us let us prove. So, this is basically constant. So, if we take uh, derivative with respect to price in both side right hand side it is constant right. So, it will be with respect to price. So, this will be basically so i into p to the power i minus 1 into q to the power j right plus p to the power i into j into q to the power j minus 1 into del q del p right if we take the derivative of the left hand side with respect to price. So, this we will get right that must be equals to 0 because right hand side there is a constant. So, if you take del constant del p it will be 0 right. So, now so if we take that say i into p to the power i minus 1 into q to the power j that must be equals to minus p to the power i into j into q to the power j minus 1 into del q del p right. So, if I take say all these things left hand side this will be what i by j into p to the power i minus 1 by p to the power i. So, there will be p in the denominator and left hand side q to the power j and here q to the power j minus 1. So, q in the numerator right that must be equals to minus del q del p right. So, now if we take this thing in the right hand side that will be say i by j is basically minus del q del p into p by q. So, this entire thing is the elasticity of demand with a negative sign. So, minus I am taking outside uh, inside right. So, since it is a downward sloping demand curve this thing is the elasticity of demand right own price elasticity of demand. So, so basically okay, or I can take this minus this minus in the left hand side. So, we are getting del q del p into p by q is simply minus i by j right. So, absolute value of the elasticity or 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 uh, elasticity absolute value is basically i by j ok. So, so we will now uh, we, we are about to finish today's lecture. So, what we have discussed? We have discussed elasticity value along different demand curves extreme including the extreme demand curve vertical horizontal kind of demand curve ok. And then we have established the relationship of your expenditure vis a vis price movement and hence accordingly quantity adjustment right. How you using that relationship we are searching for whether we can have a demand curve usual demand curve along which different points on the different points elasticity demand value is 1 or uh, same right that we have discussed and first we got that yes it can be same and that same value is 1 if we have a rectangular hyperbola kind of demand curve. Not only that we, we then we are searching uh, whether that uh, elasticity of demand value will be constant across different points on that same demand curve right, but that may not be other one rather other than one. So, that also we got that yes and that general equation of that kind of demand curve will be p to the power i q to the power j equals to constant. So, obviously you can understand if we have a demand curve whose equation is p square into q equals to some constant say 5 right what we will get definitely its elasticity of absolute elasticity value will be 
2 by 1 because q to the power 1 is there p to the power 2 q to the power 1 right that kind of thing. So, elasticity value is 2 by 1 and that will be constant along that demand curve at every point. Okay. Similarly, if we have say one demand curve p to the power 2 q to the power 3 equals to say some 9 const some constant then we will get this elasticity value along that different points will be 2 by 3 and so on right. So, that kind of thing. So, the point is as we play around this kinds of things again and again and various from various dimensions right. Your curiosity you have to pose that kind of question that kind of curiosity to yourself and then play around using this simple equation simple derivative tools what we brought here you can get uh, answers okay, and you will be mo much more interesting kind of answer you will get and these kinds of things will make you more and more interested. Okay. So, let us uh, stop here and we will uh, go back or we will, we will start afresh in the next class that how uh, elasticity of supply we can determine exactly the same way okay. uh, and how different uh, kinds of supply curve can be there and depending on the different natures of those supply curves how the elasticity of demand value will be and so on. Right. So, that we will discuss in our next lecture, take care.